Hi guys, my name is Max, I'm working for Vera One, and today we're going to talk about Tether, their USDT, their past history, and also their lies. We're going to talk about their lies, we're going to talk about the recent explanations they have did, we're going to talk about what they've hidden from the investors, and we're going to answer to two questions at least. The first one is that if you're holding USDT as a stablecoin, should you trust it or not? The second question, which is actually more of a confirmation, is that why you should not hold USDT as a stablecoin. And the third one that we're going to answer to throughout the whole video is we're going to try to know and understand if USDT is linked to a potential price manipulation of Bitcoin. So we're going to try and draw a kind of a timeline starting from 2012 to try and understand what has led to today's controversy about Tether and their reserves. So 2012 was the birth of a seemingly unrelated company which was called iFinex. It was founded in Hong Kong and then launched in the British Virgin Islands, known as BVIs. Um, in 2014 was the birth of two, again, seemingly uncorrelated companies. Bitfinex, which was a cryptocurrency platform or cryptocurrency exchange, which is still in activity today and is actually one of the biggest cryptocurrency platforms out there. The second company that was born is Tether, which is a stablecoin issuing company which issued the USDT, the uh, most renowned stablecoin today, which is backed, or supposedly, in theory, backed by USD. So keep those three dates in mind. 2012, the creation of iFinex. 2014, the creation of Bitfinex, a cryptocurrency exchange. In 2014 as well, the creation of Tether. Then comes the first date that will actually help us begin to understand the relationship between those three companies. In 2015, Bitcoin knew its largest drop ever. It dropped by 87% for the initiation of the first, so to speak, bear market, which happened before the 2017 bull run. So after that 87% drop that happened in 2015 for Bitcoin, Bitfinex, the cryptocurrency platform, listed trading pairs that were pegged to the USDT token, which was issued by Tether, as we've explained in the introduction. Which means that, let me explain just to get a bit of, of detail about what I'm saying here. If you get to Coinbase, for example, the simplest exchange out there, if you buy Bitcoin, you're going to do that with Euro or USD, which means that you're going to trade a BTC USD pair or a BTC Euro pair. But in the case of Bitfinex and Tether, Bitfinex listed a BTC USDT pair, which means that it was you're basically trading Bitcoin against another token, which was the USDT token issued by Tether, the company that we've talked about in the introduction. So then 2017 happened. We all know what happened. Bitcoin hit $20,000 for the first time. Everybody was talking about it. BitConnect happened, for those who remember. But that's not the worst event that happened. The actual worst event that happened, most people don't know about that. And it is from Bitfinex and Tether. And it wasn't until late 2017 a few days before the market crash, if you know what I'm talking about, that leaked documents confirmed that Bitfinex and Tether were run by the same company, iFinex, which was built and founded in 2012, as we said in the introduction. So that's the first lie they gave us. For years, they said that Bitfinex and Tether were unrelated, basically, but it was proven otherwise. So the actual documents of the subpoena were not made public. The only thing that we know is that Bitfinex, right after that, they closed all new account registrations. And a few weeks later, Tether's legal team announced that USDT tokens could no longer be issued for US citizens. And that's the first problem. The second problem is that they cut all ties with their auditors because they said they had a complex balance sheet. That's it. That's the only reason they gave them. And you can see that because of this, the fact that they were not able to issue tokens to US citizens anymore is one of the reasons that liquidity lacked in the market, which was a cause of the Bitcoin drop after early 2018. You can see a strong correlation between the periods where Tether is actually printing dollars, because that's all they're doing, to be perfectly honest, and uh, the periods of decay or um, bullish sentiment in the, in the Bitcoin market. That's pretty funny because actually if you look into 2020 and 2021, you can see records amount of Tether being printed and which supposedly helped fueling the 2021 bull run. So from 2015 to 2017, that's the first period of rumble and tumble for Tether. The second wave of problems they had 
was actually started pretty recently. It was in 2019 and it was done by the New York Attorney General. And Tether and Bitfinex were sued by that same person. They were accused of price manipulation and fraud and of course they denied all accusations because that's what they're best at, lying. That's what they've done for the past 10 years. And during that lawsuit, one of the lawyers working for Tether actually admitted that only 70% of the circulating supply of USDT tokens was actually backed by USD or actually backed by cash. So that's really not reassuring. When you're a USDT holder, let's say that everybody wants to withdraw USDT, everybody at the same time, which we can call kind of a bank run. If everybody does that, but only 74% of the circulating supply is in cash, how do you do that? Or actually 26% of the circulating supply that cannot be withdrawn. And that's a huge problem because you're gonna have the same problems that happened in Greece a few years ago where everybody's running for liquidity but there is not enough liquidity to be satisfied with. So that lawsuit with the New York Attorney General lasted for two years. The results were made public in early 2021. And the result was a settlement between Tether, Bitfinex and the New York Attorney General. A settlement, which means that they agreed on a fine which was $18.5 million, which they probably paid by printing them, to be perfectly honest. So a settlement is not a win for Tether. It is simply an agreement to say, well, okay, we've made mistakes, we recognize them, we're going to pay a fine for that and then we're gonna continue with our business. If you look at Paolo Arduano's Twitter, which is basically Tether's chief uh, technology officer, you're gonna see that he basically claims that it is a win for Tether, it is not. If you deep dive into the actual documents of the New York Attorney General, you're gonna see multiple things. You're gonna see that investigators have basically said that one, Tether had no access to banking. Two, Tether held no reserves. Three, Tether wasn't backed by the dollar, and we're going to come back to that in the conclusion with, by something that they actually published a few days ago. And four, that Tether and Bitfinex covered huge losses. And one of the other consequences of that is that Tether and Bitfinex are not allowed to have activity in New York or in the New York state anymore. Tether said, quote to quote, we admit to no wrongdoing. That is actually what they said, but it's not true. It is just not true. If you look into the documents that we'll put into the description, look at those. It is not true and Tether lied once again. And that's a pretty alarming sign because that means that the New York AG basically gave them a pass, which was worth uh, $18.5 million, but that's still a pass. They basically said, you can keep doing what you do, just not in my state anymore. But that opens the case for bigger institutions to start diving into the case. Maybe, I don't know, the SEC, for example, the Security and Exchange Commission, which is currently in a lawsuit with Ripple Labs. So that was the second lie that Tether put on the market, basically. They're just branding it and publishing it as, you know, it's a win. We've won the lawsuit. We've come to a settlement. No, it's a settlement. That's nothing else. Um, at the end of March 2021, kind of out of the blue, published a audit and a report of reserves saying that the USDT was fully backed. And the problem is, at that time, I was actually supposed to shoot that video and when I read the report, I was like, well, I was wrong and that's okay, I just have to admit that. But then I looked into the actual report. So the report was made by Moore, M-O-O-R-E, which is a really serious cabinet of audit. It's, it's been existing for more than a century, so it's, it's really serious. And when I looked at that, I looked at the report, I couldn't find anything just to, to say that was probably wrong. I couldn't find anything. And I then realized that the report wasn't made by Moore. It was made by Moore Cayman. So I went on and looked at the Moore Cayman website to try and see who they were, basically. And if when you look at their website, they're supposedly in activity, or they have been supposedly in activity since 2018, but their website is not finished you still have empty pages and apparently they only have a five-person team. Why would someone or why would a company with a $60 billion market cap or at least issuing a stablecoin which has $60 billion of market cap every single day, why would a company that issues that go through a five-person company that is a subsidiary of a big group and not audit their reserves by 
one of the big fours, EY, uh, Dell what? KPMG, one of those, why would you not do that? No, they chose instead to do it with a five-person company that is barely existing and in the Cayman Islands, which is, you know, pretty convenient. And that actually rang a bell and with Vera One and the team, we just said, well, no, they're just covering up another lie once again. And then, and this video is being shot on the 25th of May, just so you know, so a few days after one of the biggest Bitcoin market crashes the market has ever known. One, uh, or at least a few days before that crash, um, Tether lifted a veil on reserves, on their actual reserves. You can see on that graph that 75% of the, a bit more than 75% of the reserves are made of cash and cash equivalents. But when you dig a bit deeper into those cash and cash equivalents, you can see that there is 3.87% of the reserves that are actually backed by cash, by physical cash. The rest is pretty much bullshit. You don't know what that is. You don't know what it's backed by. And it's not even 3.87% of the reserves uh, that are backed by cash. It is 3.87% of 75% of cash and cash equivalents. And that is 2.97% of the whole supply that is backed by cash. That is not normal. And you can see that most of the cash and cash equivalent is made out of commercial paper. Okay, that's great, but can you withdraw that? Can you, do you actually have value in those? Well, maybe, but you're going to have so many third parties involved in there. What does it mean for the consumer? Nothing. It doesn't mean anything. And what's pretty funny in that, in that report is that, and that's from Tether itself, by the way, so you have to know that. What's pretty funny in that is that 9.96% is corporate bonds, funds, and precious metals. Which means that we could assume, I'm not saying that it's actually the case, but we could assume that the amount of precious metal they have to back the USDT is bigger than the cash itself. They probably do not believe in the value of USD on the long run, as we do as we do. But the thing is, we're not selling a lie. They are, and they have been since 2014. And that's something we have to accept. Of course, I'm not saying that everything is a lie, but you should still be suspicious of their activity. They have been lying for a long time. Why would they stop now? It doesn't make sense because their whole business model is based on lies. That's what, that's what they did. And that's what is being proven every single time. But that is not mediatized. Why is it not mediatized? Because, well, it's gonna crash the whole market and that's what it did a few days ago. So you have to be careful because the USDT is not the best stablecoin out there and you have to keep that in mind. And the reason why we're making this video is that the biggest uh, market share in stablecoin is still USDT. Yes, okay, USDC is gaining in market share, in market share and that's fine, but that's not enough. It is not enough because if the biggest stablecoin issuer trusts precious metals, more than USD, there is a problem here. You want to invest in precious metals? We have a stablecoin for that. We have actual audits for that. You just have to click the link in the description. That's as easy as that. At least, for once, you can give them the fact that they haven't lied. They blatantly stated they were lying in the past, but they didn't lie today, and that's pretty good. I mean, that's a step forward. But still, just look at the graph, see for yourself, make your own conclusions. I think they're pretty obvious. So if you're holding USDT, is it the best solution? No, it's not. USDC is better and if you're in favor of decentralization, we fully um, trust DAI for this. If you want to know a bit more about DAI, you can click on that video that we made on stablecoins and you're going to see what is an algorithmic stablecoin. You'll be able to know a bit more about that. So you have two known options out there, USDC, which was made by Coinbase and Circle, which have a lot more audits and is a lot more trustworthy. Then you have DAI, which is decentralized, and we completely understand that. But if you want something that is backed by precious gold, you have the VRO token. So the only thing we did here is list the historical and legal facts between Tether and Bitfinex. If there are um, the main things to take out from this video is that one, you shouldn't trust them because they have been lying for the past few years. Two, if you're holding USDT, it's probably not a good idea. Three, you should probably invest in something that is worth something. The VRO token is here for that. So thank you for having listened to our rants about Tether, USDT and Bitfinex, but we believe this is really important to highlight because nobody does it. 
because it would crash the market once again. So if you have any questions about that, don't hesitate to leave it in the comments. We'll talk soon about another subject. If you have any suggestions, please let us know. Thank you very much. It was Max from Verawine. Talk soon.